Hey guys, welcome to ShiftCast. You're watching a segment from the full video. If you want to catch the full video, check it out in the live tab of our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Let's get right into it. We got a couple things we want to cover though before we close out the show. Some recent stuff. Um, a couple of changes. One to RL Esports and then one to the competitive game, which does actually relate to RLCS as well. First up, World Championship format change. It will remain a Swiss into a top eight, and then obviously we'll continue on from there. But the top eight is now a hybrid bracket until the top four. It's a little bit confusing. If you're familiar with an AFL playoff bracket, or if you watched Johnny's recent Salt Mine, you will see um, how that goes. But I'll try to sum it up really quickly and sim as simple as possible. Seeds one through four after Swiss are going to go into a group up top. And then seeds five through eight are going to go into a group in the bottom. All right. And here's what's going to happen. The two winners of seeds one through four are going to go straight to the semifinals. And then the losers from those top side are going to play the winners of the bottom. So basically, uh, it's kind of a double elim for the top and then single elim for the bottom, but only until top four when you get to semifinals it's straight through to the grand finals. So it's, it's a little bit of a different thing. Um, what do you guys make of this? First off, not just the format, but what do you guys make of the fact that Blast is first listening, making uh, changes, um, and, and, and listening to the feedback and making changes, but also I want to get what you guys take is about making changes during the season. Um, I think this is fine in terms of making changes during the season because it's the world championship. Like, there's such, that is so far away. Like people, sure. I don't think people realize how far away the world championship is. Uh, it's, I think, in September. September, right? yeah. So, and also, once you get to that point, the format doesn't matter anymore. There are 16 teams left that are competing, right? It's not like you're affecting someone's future, like, placements, right? Like, this yeah. is it. The whole season's led to this one, uh, this one tournament. Um, I think Blast did a great job listening. Um, the one thing, you know, I would like, I think this should have been in the online qualifier format. I was fine with single A11 top eight and, and the LAN, right? That's like, we're trying to win a tournament here, but this feels like a really good way of figuring out who the top four teams in a region are because it rewards you for finishing top four in Swiss. And I know that's a little weird with game differential, but even if you finish fifth, you're playing the eighth place team. And then if you're, you know, it also allows for more matchups outside of the top four teams to figure out who's fifth, who's sixth, who's fourth. Yeah. Um, so I would have liked to see it. I guess I, uh, I have to say I'm on board with mid season changes. If the changes are good, this was a good change. I would have liked to see it throughout the rest of the season. Um, obviously there's other changes we've talked about that we wanted, but yeah, I think this is a super positive change, more crowd days, more games for the top teams against the crowd and more chances for the best four teams to be playing yeah. on the final day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually don't know who is behind this change. Uh, it, it could very well be blast, but I feel like blast is still very much in that listening stage and this might be something that was already in the works, sure. um, but just wasn't quite figured out yet and before the season started. Um, like, actually, I think a lot of other changes um, to RLCS in general. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with mid-season changes as long as they're clear to everyone and, and this is something uh, that can for it be explained very well uh, that the teams and the viewers and everyone can understand, can get. Uh, and also, it's basically double elimination, right? But it doesn't give you a bracket reset. It doesn't give you yeah. the um, upper uh, bracket finals, which is kind of a grand finals, but right, not right. because there's another finals after it. So that's kind of always a little bit long and and lame you know, it, yeah. yeah yeah is it the grand finals it is if one team wins but not the other one yes yeah it, it becomes a little bit of a of a long especially during a, a lan you don't want yeah. to have extra matches to play that don't mean everything when you still you know of course it's nice to have double elimination i think a lot of people applaud that but this is a good system to not have to deal with an, two grand finals and then another one if there's a bracket reset so yeah. 
Th th that's nice about the system too, I feel like. Yeah. I'm just really curious to see how they're going to implement it on the day, on the days, I should say, because it means, well, there's a different number of matches to play. There's different stakes. There's different moments in which eliminations happen. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that works. Yeah, I, I will say I'm definitely a little bit more skeptical and hesitant to mid-season changes. I think, um, I think it's a slippery slope. And I think, you know, when you initiate something, it is important to have things outlined. But I think you guys are right about the sense uh, about the things like the stipulations, I guess, that you guys have outlined where it's like needs to be clearly communicated. There needs to be like a clear and concise reason that we're making these changes. Um, and, and like what Michael said too, this thing is months away. You know, if this was like two weeks out and they announce it, I think that's not good. But um, overall, yeah. I think you're, you're yeah, like they're, they're, they're listening not... to feedback and they're making the changes. And, and I think that's obviously a positive sign. It's also everyone still has to sign up, you know, or like has signed up in the last week. So it's it's not while everyone has already signed up. You know what you sign up for, literally. Right, right. right. Yeah, like, for example, me, like, I was obviously going to dominate quals, but after obviously. I saw this, I was like, this is just ridiculous they're doing this. So I just decided not to sign up. But, you know, <laughs> well, so Psyonics lost an elite, elite talent. Let's just go. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, but there is one big gameplay update, and we have not had a Rocket League gameplay update in years, and I am not yeah. exaggerating. This is a gameplay update. They have applied a small graphic indicator on your teammate's nameplate to show the boost level. And I think um, I think this is very, very much geared towards your casual base your ranked solo cures specifically um and, and i've seen all kinds of different takes about it but I, you know i think the angle really is this the game allows for partying up and when you're in comms you can say i have 12 boost mm -hmm. and no one has to look around to see it i don't have to pay attention to to find that out i don't i, I michael can tell me I am full boost. He can tell I me that. I never do that, though, to be and honest with you. And that is an obvious advantage. And so I think they are trying to do what they can just to minimize that advantage. It's obviously still advantageous to be in comms versus solo queue. But this is a, a level of information that they can share with everyone, only for your team, not the entire lobby, only the team, that will just make things a little bit more uniform across the board. Um, and And... You know, I see a lot of people saying this. It actually raises the skill ceiling. Like the what you are capable of knowing that your team has this level of boost. Like you should theoretically be able to be a better player. And that's what a yeah. ceiling is. Now, I think there are complaints about like the floor, you know, like what it requires of you is less because now you don't have to track every boost pad pickup from your teammate. You can just glance over there. The thing is half full. So the floor is maybe... Um, lower right because it's more accessible it's not as difficult to keep track of what your teammate has in the tank uh but the ceiling and and i think it's marginal but theoretically should actually raise yeah i, I actually was, don't uh, think this is going to make that big of a difference if i'm being honest so interestingly yeah, enough, anyone. so interestingly enough i didn't either but i was i was in the shift court uh yep. once again you can click down below and join the shift card with the link um, and I was, you know, I was, I was, I was lurking a little bit. And um, uh, Zanil, pro player for Omelet, was talking about how he actually believes, and I'm going to, you know, share his words, paraphrase, that this actually has a chance to raise the skill ceiling professionally um, mm. because it will, one, force pros to potentially use their right stick and rear view mirror more often. Uh, and the reason that is is because the amount of information you can communicate if you don't have to communicate your boost constantly now yep. opens up so much more, right? That's like yep. how many how how much what percentage do you think yeah. of a calm of comms across an entire game are 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 them telling them their boost? Probably twenty percent, right? Zero probably boost. More. I got full. I got fifty. Yep. I'm challenging forty, right? If you don't have to do that, if everyone's just moving their right stick when they're rotating back, just clocking how many everyone has roughly. Um, and then maybe you still got a common, you have zero, um, you know, you're actually able to, to, to communicate other things other than right. your boost, right? Um, on a casual level, you know, as a, as a former solo queue ranked demon, I really wish it was, it was there when I was trying to climb for GC tags. 
Um, I did get GC though, so I, I succeeded. Okay, two Let's and a go. half years ago. Um, and uh, you know, I think it would help because you know the amount of times that I am absolutely zero boost in that, and I get I get scored on, and my teammate just start nabbing that damn pad. <laughs> go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it, and I got like shot, sadly tight like. I had no boost and they don't believe you like that. It's good for morale. Um, yeah, I think it's good. I hope, I hope they continue to, to, to do stuff like this. Uh, yeah. so like you said, I think, I don't know if you count the tournament revamp as an, as a gameplay update, but that was probably the last thing around this yeah. type of thing. Uh, and that was, you know, free to play three years ago. So yeah, um, this is, this is good. This is good that we're still getting, you know, updates to this. And I think it opens up a lot of uh, accessibility, sort of uh, uh, features on the lower levels and uh, potentially could change the game at the upper level. Yeah, and this, I think, uh, what most people take away from this is that Rocket League is getting updated <laughs> in, in any way, shape, or form. And that means that Psyonix and everyone involved is busy with Rocket League, is, is working on it. Um, because you don't always get to see that. You don't always get that feedback. Uh, and now we do. So I think that's the biggest takeaway. Whether this is actually going to make a big change to the game at a high level, uh, not many people I've seen responding to this think it's a game changer. Um, and actually, I think at the highest, highest level, I, at, at like LAN, I've listened to a few teams come, and so, some don't come in English, but even the French teams, most of their comms is time, 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 time. It's just calling when their teammates have time on the ball and can actually go for the solo plays or go for the passes or where the space is, is much more of a of something that gets communicated than what boost they're at. I feel like at the highest, highest level, they've kind of figured that out because they have such a good brain for the game at that point that they know what's going on. They they have the internal timings of when the big boost uh, yeah. pads are spawning. They know who's in the back corner. They know when it's getting picked up. Mm -hmm. um, they know exactly the amount of boost the other team is on. They know their opponent's boost meters better than themselves maybe um i i feel like at that level it's not gonna matter much but yeah it, it's funny how the actual blog post put it they said many players may not fully understand the significance of boost management so we feel that showing <laughs> players how their teammates are handling boosts will better will help them make better decisions for themselves and their team so they know their player base they're uh, basically they're roasting us yeah, yeah really. stop, stop driving around just supersonic trying to do <laughs> yeah. yeah no i think uh i think you nailed it like the important takeaway here is that we have not been forgotten they are continuing yeah. to pay attention to us there is a game a rocket league game specific update that is not cosmetics and we have to applaud that yeah. psionics um, if you're listening next thing tournament 3.0 okay i want different formats okay listen if you do a Swiss into a single Elam bracket, that's eight games max. A tournament right now is nine games max. So I'm, it's not too many games. And I want to reverse sweep a Swiss. I want to see. <laughs> Different I formats would be cool. That's a good, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Mirror the um, RLCS. Mirror while we're making the RLCS, suggestions, give us good. Club Cube. Give us Club yes. Cube. Mm. Uh, give me a directory. Then, give me a directory. Like the game. Give me a directory and catalog for training packs. Yes. How, do I, how am I supposed to find them? Yeah, there's no, there's no directory. 17 well, digit that. codes you have to find on Reddit. I don't get that. I don't know why there isn't a directory. That feels so straightforward to me. Anyways, we can, this, this podcast people. would turn into a 10 hour rant. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> kidding. I am so serious because this is regular stream content. Um, I will go on for actual days if we keep this up. So Rocket League, we're excited to see a gameplay update. We're excited to see um, RL Esports continue to listen, field feedback. Uh, make some changes, do what they can to just continue to improve things with the budget that they have obviously set aside for the game and, and the eSport. Um, you know, I, I said it a few weeks back. I was feeling very pessimistic. I, a lot of those feelings have subsided. I feel a lot better We're about so things. so back. It is, 
I mean, it's just what you said. Like, it just feels good to see things moving in a, a positive direction. Like, it's not all doom and gloom now. There's something. There's something to hold on to for hope. So, I'm, I'm, I'm back. I'm back. We're so back. That's good. Next oh. thing, Coach uh, Slots. Before Coach Slots, please. please, please. And that's that's what I've mostly been hearing over the last day or so. That's the next thing people want. Absolutely, they need it, man. Then the coaches need it. That's going to conclude uh, Shiftcast episode 12. We appreciate you all listening. Make sure you join the Shift Chord. Drop in some takes there. If we, might, uh, we might catch your take and, and do it on the next podcast. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you all for watching Shiftcast. If you want to catch some more episodes, you can do so right here on this YouTube channel or on Spotify. We'll catch you next time.